I'm Adrienne Wilkinson. I play Captain Lexa Singh in Star Trek Renegades. Adrienne, how on earth did you get involved with Star Trek Renegades? I'll be completely honest, I really have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, I assumed that they were interested in me because of my uh, background in genre. I also I have to interrupt and say it sounds a little bit like a phone sex hotline in here, and that's my dog panting. So. Oh, the heavy breathing yeah. is not the girls in the back. <laughs> right, then? exactly. Oh, okay. So we're just going to have to, just so you know. I think that. that actually, that's a value add for my audience. I love it. They'll, they'll, they'll enjoy I that. love it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I really, I don't know. Um, I have done quite a bit of uh, work in Star Wars. Uh, I've also done uh, some movies for the Sci-Fi Channel. I've done uh, just some other genre work. And uh, I was initially, uh, sort of my, my big thing, my calling card, was Xena Warrior Princess. So I have a bit of a genre background. I assume that that's one of the reasons that I was sort of brought into the, to the fold. Those in charge, mm -hmm. they uh, mm -hmm. reached out to me and wanted to know if I was interested. And I'm in a heartbeat. I'm absolutely interested. Of course. So. Let's touch on each of those genre experiences you talk about. Tell me about your experience in the Star Wars universe. Uh, Star Wars, I am mainly known as Maris Brood from uh, Star Wars The Force Unleashed. <laughs> I have to tell you, I'm, I'm entering scary territory because Star Wars, Star Trek, inevitably I'm going to have to do some verbal gymnastics. Well, they're the same thing. You know that, right? They're, they act, it's told. the same thing. Yeah, so really it's fine. No yeah, one. yeah, there's not, yeah, nothing to so worry when, about. So when Yoda comes into the Renegades... Right, like, okay. no one's going to be surprised. I was like, of course, because Kirk needs his Jedi training. That's exactly to right. To be a good captain of the Star Trek. Completely. I'm glad we're on the same page. <laughs> no, so so for, for those who don't know, um, Force Unleashed is, is a video game, yes? It was a video game series. Uh, what they did is instead of a seventh movie, they told the story of the, I think it's 17 years between the two trilogies, they ended up telling that story in a video game. Hmm. And it was a marriage of about five different technologies. We did motion capture, I voiced the character, we also filmed it. Uh, it was just a bunch of things. And they married it all together to create this animation that was really, really amazing. Uh, the five lead characters, myself included, we did all of the, uh, the technological stuff, including motion capture, et cetera, and so forth. So we are the, the physical likeness as mm. well as the voices for the characters. Outstanding. Yeah. Xena, tell me about your, your time with Xena. Uh, I play Xena's daughter, uh, Livia and Eve, depending on where you are in the story, uh, which makes perfect sense because <laughs> uh, because Lucy Lawless is so much older than me. No. Right, right. Uh, exactly. It's, <laughs> it's one of those things that can only happen in a um, in a fantasy series sure. where uh, Xena found herself pregnant and then has the baby. And as happens, she then finds herself uh, in a coma in an ice cavern for 25 years and wakes up and there I am. So pretty standard stuff. Then. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So what was the third one? Star Wars, Xena, and the other one you mentioned was? Uh, I've done some sci-fi movies. Oh yeah, yeah, tell me about those. Like what kind of, what kind of sci- were you in the shark octopus one? I was not in that. I was okay. in an alien invasion one. Was Lorenzo Lamas in that one also? It was not. It was uh, Olivier Grunier. Oh, okay. Yes. So it was, uh, to, to make, I'm, I'll just sort of give you the overview of my character. Yeah. And I will, I will say, at this point, I was, bless you, uh, at this point, I was about, I want to say 22, 23 years old. And I also happened to probably look more like 16 or 17. Okay. Uh, and I was playing the nuclear physicist in the film. <laughs> so, so we were under potential um, nuclear attack and I had to, you know, help save the world. And, and we did. To spoil. Okay, good. Okay. Absolutely. That's great. That's fantastic. <laughs> so let me, um, let me tie all this together because the question I want to know is have you, have you ever like been to a convention for one of those properties where, no where you... I what you're talking about. You, yes, you do. <laughs> it's, well, what happens is it's like a bunch of people, like let's say you're a person who watches the TV. Okay. And you see a show that you like. Okay. And then someone puts a thing on the internet. Do you have the internet? I've heard about it. It's on the computer. It's kind of okay. lame. But like someone will put something there that says like, hey, a bunch of us are getting together and we're going to talk about it and maybe wow. they'll dress up like the characters. Sounds fun. And then there's like people from the show who go there and soak adoration. Soak adoration. Do autographs. That sounds like something I should sign up for. Right? I mean, it sounds really fun. 
So have you have you ever been to a convention for one of those? I have. I have. I have been to several. And um, tell me about tell me about your experiences with uh, fandom. Uh, they run the gamut. <laughs> <laughs> That's very polite. That's very uh, for the most part, it's amazing. I find that fans are. I mean, come on. Anybody is lucky to have a fan, and if you have more than one, right. <laughs> like, you know you are. Oh, my dog just stole his toy back. Um, but yeah, it's it's an incredible experience. It's a little bit weird because it, it's not really about you. It's about the work and the characters, and it's an interesting sort of thing that you're having to navigate because people come up to you and they assume that they know you but they kind of more than that just assume that you're the character. So sometimes it's a little Interesting. strange thing. Uh, but it's always amazing. I mean, as an actor, unless you're doing work on stage, you generally are not able to have instant audience feedback. Sure. So, or audience feedback at all for that matter. So it's really interesting at a convention to be able to get that feedback from fans and they will tell you what they like and what they hated. <laughs> so, so you get all of it, but it's incredible because you get to talk about your work in a way that where you see it appreciated, but also um, just where you see it dissected in a way that is just something you've never imagined possible or certainly not face-to-face uh, -face in terms of getting that sort of feedback so it's really it's amazing I I dig them for the most part without a uh, sort of telling tales out of school give me an example that could put that into context like what is an interaction where someone is sort of dissected to a point where you were like dude it's a show it's just a right it's just a show well I think one of the things that can trip actors up at some moments is that at least with television episodes you generally end up filming more than ends up on screen so in our minds sometimes the stories are more complete than they are for the fans because we filmed all those scenes we lived those scenes and then you know when 10 or 20 minutes gets cut out of an episode to make the final cut it, sometimes we we forget that those parts are missing so we will have experienced parts of a show that the fans didn't so we've made that mental leap or that connection where we aren't missing things where sometimes the fans are so it's been interesting to sort of see what they pick up on the symbolism the family histories the just whatever they bring to it themselves. So that's been really interesting. Um, the fact that they can remember dialogue like that, that is 15 years old and, <laughs> you know, you think they've got it right, but you don't even, you know, it's it's one of those things where they're better at it than you are. You know, they are they are better at, memori at, at, at the, uh, the memories of the show. They are better at the trivia of the show. So you also kind of feel, you know, like the, the dunce in class sometimes. <laughs> Uh, but it's, I mean, it's great. It's its incredible that anybody is that interested in your work, much less a huge group of people. So.